And other astronomers either say there was a primordial explosion, an enormous bang millions of years ago, billions of years ago, which flung all the galaxies into space. Well, let's take that just for the sake of argument and say that was the way it happened. It's like uh, you took a bottle of ink and you threw it at a wall. A smash, and all that ink spreads. And in the middle, it's dense, isn't it? And as it gets out on the edge, the little droplets are finer and finer and make more complicated patterns. See? So in the same way, there was a big bang in the beginning of things, and it spread. And you and I, sitting here in this room, as complicated human beings, are way, way out on the fringe of that bang. We're the complicated little patterns on the end of it. Very interesting. But so we define ourselves as being only that. If you think that you are only inside your skin, you define yourself as one very complicated little curly cue, way out on the edge of that explosion, way out in space and way out in time. Billions of years ago, you were a big bang. But now you're a complicated human being. And when then we cut ourselves off <coughs> like this, and don't feel that we are still the Big Bang. But you are. Depends how you define yourself. You are actually, if, if this is the way things started, if there was a Big Bang in the beginning, you're not something that is a result of the Big Bang on the end of the process. You are still the process. You are the Big Bang the original force of the universe coming on as whoever you are. See, when I meet you, I see not just what you define yourself as, Mr. So-and-so, Miss So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so. I see every one of you as the primordial energy of the universe coming on at me in this particular way. I know I'm that too. But we've learned to define ourselves as separate from it. And so what I would call a kind of a basic problem we've got to go through first is to understand that there are no such things as things. That is to say separate things or separate events. That that is only a way of talking. And if you can understand this, you're going to have no further problems. <laughs> I once asked a group of high school children, what do you mean by a thing? And first of all, they gave me all sorts of synonyms. They said it's an object, which is simply another word for a thing. It doesn't tell you anything about what you mean by a thing. And finally, a very smart girl from Italy who was in the group said a thing is a noun. And she was quite right. A noun isn't a part of nature, it's a part of speech. There are no nouns in the physical world. There are no separate things in the physical world either. See, the physical world is wiggly. The clouds, mountains, trees, people are all wiggly. And uh, only when human beings get working at things, they build buildings in straight lines and try and make out that the world isn't really wiggly. But here are we sitting in this room all built on straight lines, but each one of us is as wiggly as all get out. Now then, when you uh, want to get control of something that wiggles, it's pretty difficult, isn't it? You try and pick up a fish in your hands, and the fish is wiggly and it slips out. What do you do to get hold of a fish? You use a net. And so the, the net is the basic thing we have for getting hold of the wiggly world. And so if you want to get hold of this wiggle, you've got to put a net over it. And I can number the holes in a net. So many so holes up, so many holes across. And if I can number these holes, I can count exactly where each wiggle is in terms of a hole in that net. And that's the beginning of calculus, the art of measuring the world. But in order to do that, I've got to break up the wiggle into bits. And I've got to call this a specific bit, and this the next bit of the wiggle, and this the next bit, and this the next bit of the wiggle. And so these bits are things or events. Bits of wiggles. 
which I mark out in order to talk about the wiggle, in order to measure it, and therefore in order to control it. But in nature, in fact, in the physical world, the wiggle isn't bitted. Like you don't get a cut-up fryer out of an egg. <laughs> but you have to cut the chicken up in order to eat it. You bite it. But it doesn't come bitten. So the world doesn't come thinged. It doesn't come evented. You and I are all as much continuous with the physical universe as a wave is continuous with the ocean. The ocean waves and the universe peoples. And as the wave, I wave at you and say, you, the world is waving at me with you and saying, uh, hi, I'm here. But we are consciousness the way we feel and sense our existence, being based on a myth that we are made, that we are parts, that we are things, our consciousness has been influenced so that each one of us does not feel that. We feel we have been hypnotized, literally hypnotized, by social convention into feeling and sensing that we exist only inside our skins, that we are not the original bang, but just something out on the end of it. And therefore, we are scared stiff. Because my wave is going to disappear. And I'm going to die. And that would be awful. We've got a mythology going now, which, as uh, Father Maskell put it, we are nothing but something that happens between the maternity ward and the crematorium. <laughs> and that's it. And therefore, everybody feels unhappy and miserable. You know, this is what people really believe today. You may go to church, you may say you believe in this, that, and the other, but you don't. Even Jehovah's Witnesses, who are the most fundamentalist fundamentalists, they are polite when they come round and knock at the door. <laughs> but if you really believed in Christianity, you'd be screaming in the streets. But nobody does. You'd be taking full-page ads in the paper every day. You'd have the most terrifying television programs. The churches would be going out of their minds if they really believe what they teach. But they don't. They think they ought to believe what they teach. They believe they should believe, but they don't believe it. Because what we really believe is the fully automatic model. And that is our basic, plausible common sense.